<laughs> yes, it's, it's right. This is um, a, co a collaboration that started within the project I was doing and basically st uh, um, started because I was going from Paris to Oxford. And if you know, uh, from Paris to Oxford you can take a train and uh, uh, when you take the train from Paris uh, to, to Oxford you actually have to go to London, then take uh, um, a bus to uh, inside London and then take another bus from London to uh, Oxford. And uh, doing this many times I realized that uh, I can take a bus in London. And this is thanks to this. If you arrive from Paris to London, you arrive at um, St. Pancras International and this is the, m the bus map you have uh, um, proposed. And uh, if you have to go to, to Oxford, you just have to go in this direction. This is somewhere here, there's Victoria. And you know that you can, here there's Victoria, you can know you can take the 73. Okay, I can take a bus in London. And why this is good news and this is enough for making a paper? Because I was living in Paris. And uh, why I cannot take a bus in Paris, even if I lived there for two years? And this is the reason. The, uh, this image actually takes like half a second to be loaded in my computer and uh, since I know Paris I know that I would arrive here, this is Gardino. but if from here I want to go somewhere, I don't know, here I really don't have a clue how you can get there because all the path that cross the city from the other direction completely uh, destroy the, any track of line you can try to follow in this kind of, of maps so I literally have taken more uh, often buses in London in the few times I've been there than in Paris. And this is the, like, the, the closest comparison I, I can have to, the, to this map that takes some time to load. Uh, whereas Wally is another task that is relatively simple, but only the fact that you have a lot of uh, information that distracts you from uh, in this, uh, finding where Wally is in this mess makes the task difficult. And I don't know if you want to, to look where Wally is, but we will get back to Wally. Here, at, uh, um, yeah, in contrast to Paris, there are basically no line crossing. There is like a crossing here, a crossing here, but all the lines spread out uh, without any intersection. And here, you have less distraction, you have less other information that breaks your path of eye between the, where you are and where you want to go. This is so, uh, it's called, it's called a spider map and is only is different from any uh, origin and is cut at about uh, three miles like is a, is, a, is a local information and they change at every stop. It basically uh, if you go to uh, Victoria you will have a different map that goes only with the bus network around Victoria and, uh, and, uh, and raise outside. Is a partial map, but is the the map you will use because if you have to go farther, you normally take the, the subway. But the, the Paris map or the full one? The Paris map is the, the map that is at every metro station. You at every single metro station, you get the same map. This is the same map that you get in uh, in in paper that can is too much information. Nobody really looks at it. Nobody looks at this particular. And uh, every, uh, when, I, when, I, when I look at this map, I always like, uh, think that it looks a bit like a brain. <laughs> and uh, of course the dimensions are completely different. There's like several order of magnitudes between the, the number of nodes in the, in the Paris metro map the, and the human brain. But in the Paris bus map there is 10 times already the number of nodes or edges or whatever that you have in the Paris metro map. So the Paris, uh, but metro map can be handled, probably, because you, you use it normally. And the Paris bus map, uh, but the human brain has the power of ma managing all this, or not? Actually not. Actually our brain has several limits. And uh, one of the limits could be, for instance, can I ask you to learn all the content of this map? This is actually something that, that, that it has done. This is called the knowledge. 
and uh, is it a mandatory test to becoming a cab driver in London. You have to learn over 25,000 name of streets, 20,000 name of landmarks, about 300 routes, and naturally it takes time. It takes three years learning that map for those who pass the test, and uh, at least 12 attempts. And it's not surprised that they have been served. There is a physical change in the brain of those who can pass the test. If you if if go to check the hippocampus of people who pass the test, you will have like a change in the mass of the hippocampus. While if you don't pass the test and study that three years, the hippocampus is exactly as it was before. So uh, the hippocampus is a part of the brain that is linked with the uh, long-term memory and uh, spatial orientation. So it's not a big surprise. And this is the, the price you have to pay for learning uh, all London. And but it's not only the cab drivers have to do this. Like uh, in large cities, like in if uh, if uh, people are, uh, are asked to be to draw London, what do they draw? They draw the tube map. Actually, this this was a guy who lived in the south. He has a more, better understanding of how it was the, the south of Paris or of, of London. And then he has like some places where actually he didn't knew anything, and some point a reference point that was like Paddington. King's Cross, here there was a Waterloo. The, the map is actually at scale. He drew a map that is at scale, and then when he was out of the border of the map, he was in Terra Incognita, Leones. He didn't know how, what it was out there. So the, the mental representation of a city, of a large city like Paris of London, is the metro map. Indeed, if, if, when I lived in Paris, and people asked me, where do you live? The answer was not the name of the district. The name the, was the name of a metro station. Actually, I live between these two, and since this is as high between the centrality, I normally answer Avron as not Buzenwald, because nobody knew Buzenwald. So also the way you explore the network changes the, the, the cognitive, collective map of a city. Another limit we have is the fact that we have a limited visual um, working memory. So we have a limit, limited number of objects we can keep in mind at the same time. So if I, uh, I were asked to remember the, the position and color and orientation of objects, they found that the limit is four. You can remember features of a top four different colored objects. And this is less than the number, uh, the, number of, um, the typical number of working memory that is if I ask you to remember a series of uh, numbers, names, or uh, left or right choices, there would be something around seven. So we have less space in the mind for uh, um, spatial information than for other types of information. And this would actually limit how we can perceive a trip in a map, because uh, since we have an, an origin and destination to visualize, we'll have a, a max two connections that we can place in the space before getting to encounter this uh, uh, cognitive limit given by the working memory. And uh, another limit is the cognitive load. The cognitive load is uh, if working memory is the cache of your computer, the, uh, the cognitive load is the RAM, is how much memory you uh, are uh, you information you have to load for solving your task overall. So this is uh, like a problem, and you start uh, having information together, like uh, trying to, uh, to get all uh, all the um, all, all the people in the waste wallet. And at one point, you f you find your solution. You can uh, you can decrease the load, and uh, two tasks can have different loads. And this is an example of a task that has a community load. This graph, reading this graph, uh, demands you to um, analyze of the pieces information. Like I literally had no clue what does the, this means. This is not, not a graph that optimizes community load because there is a lot of extra information that you have to filter out to get what is the pattern that I want to show you. Like I could have another type of, type of visualization for this. I can show you the Totoro and the Chiro and the Rain and say the first task is Chiro, the second uh, task is Totoro. And I will uh, clear, clearly say that the second task is bigger than the first one. Why we don't do, uh, do that? Because we have a lot of other information that is not relevant to our problem, even though this is here. So get back to our um, where is Wally problem. The cognitive load in this case is the fact that we have a lot of distractors that are basically 
making us not able to focus on the information that is needed. In this case, it's just where wall is. And now I have to do the magic for the video. That is this. And can you please turn off the mid? No. I'll turn off everything. Okay. There is. Okay. Just follow the video. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? The correct answer is 15 passes. How many got it right? But did you see the gorilla? <laughs> How many did you see the gorilla? <laughs> okay, reply like this. So, um, in the experiment, the, 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 the largest fraction of the people didn't see the gorilla. At least they filtered out only the people who actually counted correctly. And uh, I, I guess some of you already knew the experiment because I, I heard the laugh. But I don't know how many of you the first time uh, saw the gorilla. I didn't. And, and this, is so, this is true. Like, uh, selective attention can be, in this case, um, you, sell, you, you select only to be attentive to those uh, who are white, you completely exclude those who were anything black, like a gorilla suit. So color would allow you to select information and filter out the, um, the cognitive load. And for, so getting back to where is Wally, if I do this, you know where is Wally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, the definition of the screen is, uh, is a bit limited, but. Uh, uh, just changing the color, this is cheating, I know, but the, uh, uh, changing, uh, adding a color, a color scheme, putting the, all this, it should be black and white. Well, not more black and white, yeah, but. Um, uh, the, co the, the selective attention means that if I, co if I colored every single individual different than Wally, and Wally would stand out, I could, uh, uh, the word is Wally uh, is not a game anymore, it's just what Wally is there. And so, after all these excursions, let's get, get to my specific topic, that is transit maps. Transit maps uh, use the similar tricks, like uh, you use uh, colors to allow you for, to filter out information. So if I want to go from here to here, I follow the red, the, the red line. Here, this is the oldest, this, um, um, not geographical design of the, of the, met of the metro of, um, of the underground of London, because uh, the, the geographical design have more information than needed, and straight lines actually uh, uh, decrease the quantity load of a, of a map. For this is the, the reason that the maps like uh, 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 modern maps are often octolinear, that means they have uh, four directions, eight verses. And, but this is Paris, the new version proposed is actually with the more directions and a 30 degree scheme and some circular uh, um, structure that would uh, represent the, the lines that follow the, the, the line of the wall, ancient walls. But uh, this kind of uh, changes between the geographical map and the schematic map actually gives uh, less information that can make people do wrong decisions because uh, uh, it has been studied that uh, people believe that this is actual, these are actual distances. So for, for getting from Pemington to Bond Street, half of the people will uh, um, go uh, on the upper direction and the other half will be the, making the lower direction that this is actually longer. This is not completely true because there is a bias that people tendentially go more often north and south in this kind of decision. If you have a binary, uh, a binary decision, people more often go uh, north and not south. But uh, this is uh, how um, design uh, is read. Design is read as this is true. And this can influence the way you explore, you explore an app. 
But even with all of this simplification, the map is not actually simple enough. If you take, for instance, Paris, that I show you like in many times, many different versions, and I highlight to you where is, like, like for West Wally, where is the origin and what is the destination? You already know it. And you have to get any route that goes from the origin to the destination. The average time is 30 seconds. And if you don't know where the, the, the origin and destination, I give you only the name, we're far above a minute. So this is not a simple task, only if you only take the metro. And uh, if you compare um, cities that have simple the metro structure like Hong Kong and more complex, what they found with the visual experiment, with the eye tracking experiment where you can uh, you put a, a person on the screen and you know where they're looking at with a, a, a kind of glasses, and you can exactly know where the fixations are. They found first that the more complex uh, networks have uh, more spread fixations. Then they found that for these more complex networks, they have different kind of, of uh, strategies for exploring the network and finding the solution. One would be like following the network step by step from the origin to the destination somehow, some kind of local exploration. And other are like more like kind of levy flight exploration. They, they just start scattering around the map, trying to get the information. And uh, this is a bit, the, the, they did a further experiment, trying to make like some uh, more, with more kind of a, a different maps. This was Paris. This is Tokyo. Tokyo is uh, famous for having one of the worst me metro maps in the world. And uh, it's normal to get less, lost in Tokyo. And this is Stuttgart. Stuttgart is famous for not having a metro, I guess. But uh, um, in, uh, in for, uh, for getting from uh, uh, knowledge to destination in, uh, in uh, Tokyo, I don't know why this is shown well, but in, uh, in Stuttgart, they, you just get progressively from the origin to destination. In, uh, this is a, a basically represent how uh, far you are uh, in the line from origin to destination. You see, people can, can go f back and forth trying to explore, trying to find out the solution. Actually, don't have any clue what is the solution they decided at the, at the end. And this is something that happens only when the map is complex enough. And uh, they divide it in three kind of categories. And uh, in this case, in this uh, graph, you see uh, the, for this kind of uh, increasing complexity and for color and gray, and gray um, scale, gray representation, like black and white are colored maps. If you have color, you have a higher uh, a high, higher average saccade length. And uh, if you have not color, if you have gray, gray scale, you have a lower saccade, saccade length. And it's not that the saccade length is a proxy for cognitive load. Basically, here, I, I, one could think, yeah, if more information, things are more packed, probably saccade length should be uh, shorter. But in other kind of task, this is a proxy for cognitive load. And uh, also with the increasing uh, number of complexity. So uh, for the increased number of complexity, you have, uh, of course, that, uh, uh, that it could be like, the effect of having more, more dots. But for the colors, for, for sure, it's not. And uh, the interesting thing is that uh, the fraction of errors increases with complexity. So uh, this is basically how much more you do more correction, connection than needed. And for more complex maps, you do more errors. But somehow, I don't, even, I don't really understand it, you take less time. Could be that this change of strategy is actually more time efficient while make, uh, making you do more errors. So perhaps it's a kind of different kind of exploring information that is time efficient and uh, optimal for, uh, for the case where the information is too much. And this has been, been observed in something that is a more clear kind of problem. That is, try to find a five in ranks of twos. And here I don't remember where is the five, but I, like, some hmm? Down left. Down left. He's here. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> did you read or did you scatter or did you follow the track? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, they found that when the, um, the number of destructors, the number of twos is low, people tend to scan and read the ranks. While when the number of destructors is big, they start to have uh, isotropic exploration of the, uh, of, the, of the matrix. And this is something similar to what we saw. We saw 
uh, linear exploration and then a scatter exploration. And uh, in this case, it's clear that this is the number of distractors that changes the, 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 the strategy. And in this same paper made by a Brazilian group, they actually studied where is Wally. And in where is Wally, you do the, sc the scatter exploration. So uh, I am half away with my, my talk and uh, writing time because I have a summary. Uh, so we, um, we saw that uh, we have uh, several limits uh, to our um, cognition uh, of um, uh, uh, possibility of exploring um, um, subway maps. One is that we have a mental map that is limited. The, the guy in the experiment didn't remember all the map, so we can memorize a large map. Uh, we can normally memorize the places where we, uh, we, that we explore. So we have to, uh, to, rela um, to use some other devices like using a map or uh, uh, Google for uh, or, um, getting around in London. We have a limit in the number of objects we can uh, take uh, in and use in, uh, in, our, in our mind at the same time. We have a limit in the, in the total information we, we, uh, we can process, and after a while, uh, we have a higher law, and we observe a change in the strategy, in a change in the way we try to get information out of the, our problem. And if you have any question on this, uh, I can make a uh, like first round of... Uh... No? Okay, so we can go to my work. My work uh, had a very boring name because uh, I, was, I had to be sure that the, um, the editor understood that this was physics. And uh, uh, I got a huge attention uh, on, the, on the internet. And basically, what my question was uh, how to measure the cognitive load of a tra transportation network. Actually, things went like this. I went back from Oxford, and uh, I, I spoke with my uh, former advisor, Mark Bartolini, asking, no, telling, I want to make a paper showing that the spider map is good. And he said, no, this is the wrong perspective. You have to show that the Paris map is shit. Uh, so if you want, the, the uh, uh, honest title would be, why the Paris map is shit? OK, so what? <laughs> I, 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 I got the science of is American. <laughs> but, uh, close enough. So uh, after like uh, starting like to work on this, uh, I started going around with um, the Paris uh, map uh, and asked all my friends how they would go from here, that is actually where I used to live, and to here. It is a place where I had to go once, and I understood that I really didn't know how to get there because there are several possible options, and they're basically all, as, uh, all good. I, I made the question at least 30 times. Uh, tourists normally do uh, something like this. They take the map, put one finger, one finger, and do this. And they find, in this way, they put one finger, follow, one finger, follow, they change here, and they make one connection. Parisian, they can speak hours about how it works uh, for getting from A to B in, a, uh, in, a, in the metro. And the, big, like, the discussion is, shall we take the, the yellow that is, uh, has more stops but higher frequency uh, or the red and then take the, um, the purple? The red is the light, uh, is the right rail and two, if you are a tourist and you get here, this is a very bad place where to, uh, where to connect between light rail and any of the metro, with the exception of the, the red and the purple that are close. And Parisians know this. So you, have, you know, have to have a cognitive map of Paris to solve this problem in the fastest way. Actually, the, ye the yellow and the, and the red solutions are equivalent in time in Google, in Google Maps. So it's just a matter of which one is the train that goes faster. So, there's a lot of, of things. And there are also options in the south. This blue line is uh, overground. And so one lady told me I want to take the overground because it's prettier. So the options are, are, are many. And, but the tourists normally do the simplest part. That is, do the, less, the least number of connections. And this is actually what I did because I like to read during the, the, the metro trip. So I don't have to, to waste time uh, working and connecting. So, uh, on the uh, trying to study this simple path, you have to, uh, it's better to move from the spatial representation of the transit network to what is called the information representation proposed by Roswell. And basically, is, uh, um, if you have to go from here to here in uh, New York, the shortest path would be 
this is the fastest part part in it will be do something like this because it takes you lose time when you do a connection so you just it just, uh, it just uh, you have to no, it's the opposite sorry this is the shortest and the faster but you have to connect twice this is the simplest but it's far is longer and uh, in the in the information representation all this is 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 clearly simple because the simple is only one edge between two lines you have the, 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 the brown line, the green line, and one edge between two lines represent one connection between these two transportation lines. While the shortest path would be taking the green, then taking the orange, then take the blue, and then arrive to the brown. So in the information presentation, this choice between following um, routes uh, is uh, simpler, and the shortest path in the information network is the simplest path. Of course, there is degeneracy. You can have different uh, um, different uh, co uh, co connection points from from two lines, or even even if you have two stops that belong to more than one line, you can have different path. So we saw we have to solve the degeneracy. We just take the shortest, and uh, to measure the information needed to encode this kind of routes, we just take uh, entropy. Like uh, we start from S. In S, we have five possible alternatives uh, to just go out from this node, and only one is the one, the, the one we, we picked. So we have uh, we take we start adding the, the probability of taking this. Uh, the, this is the way you explain it. The probability of taking this at random is one fifth in this case. Then you arrive here. You have four options, but one is going back, so you don't take it. So the probability of getting this for uh, the, uh, this is one third, and this go uh, this on uh, until you reach the destination. The um, the, 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 the from this from this probability you can uh, you can basically construct the entropy that is additive. So you take uh, the various uh, degrees of this network, and you add the logarithm of this degree with all the all but the first uh, minus one because you don't go back. And this is the measure that was, uh, that, uh, that was basically proposed by, uh, by Roswell, but we modified it, selecting only the shortest path, and then we use it as a proxy of cognitive load. And we propose it as a proxy of cognitive load, uh, saying that all the connections that here we have to exclude, these are the destructors in our problem. And uh, we, like this, we can easily measure in bits what is the complexity of a path. And we can make an average complexity of all the possible paths in a network and propose a complexity, for instance, on a network. But we don't do exactly this. This is, for instance, uh, examples in the bus network of uh, New York of paths of uh, increasing uh, complexity. They get longer and more connected, mostly. But uh, what we measure uh, with information is not this path, but is all the other interaction that he, uh, you have in the map while trying to, to find this path in the system. So uh, at this point, we know that there is uh, this uh, transition, uh, the, uh, the behavioral transition, and we want to find an upper bound to the information uh, at which this transition we expect it test to happen. And uh, first, we take the most complex trajectory we can uh, uh, memorize. Like the, uh, we, uh, we say, we have a limit of four. So we take only a uh, trajectory with two connections. And for metro systems, is not a problem because uh, most of the metro networks has actually, uh, you can reach everywhere with only two connections. And then we select this path with two connections. And uh, we check how much, uh, uh, how much is the information carried in the most complex subway maps. Because the transition is being served, for instance, in Paris and in Tokyo that are known to be complex. New York City, I don't know if they studied it, but it's somewhere where that probably I couldn't expect something like that. And so here we plot the uh, information of uh, uh, the, distrib the cumulative distribution of the information carried by the path of two connections in different metro systems in the world. These are the, um, the longest metro systems in the world. And uh, this is the order of basically complexity. New York City is the most complex, followed by Paris. But Paris basically gets the same if you represent also the light rail and the tramways as, as done in the, ma in, the ma in the maps that are provided. 
So basically, your city and Paris are uh, comp similarly complex. Then you have uh, Tokyo, and then you have uh, your, your Spanish cities. And uh, the and we find that uh, uh, the highest uh, amount of information carried by this trajectory is about eight bits. And we can make a parallel between metro networks and lattices, as Alex now knows. Uh, basically, uh, this, since metro networks have a core periphery structure, you normally have a very uh, um, connected core, and then like links that goes outside. And uh, there are many similarities with the fact uh, uh, of metro networks with the lattices. For, for instance, the fact that the diameter is two, but uh, and the diameter is basically two for, more, for most uh, for most cities for most uh, for most uh, networks. And also, we find that the, for how the Paris metro network grew, uh, it it grew in time with the same number of intersection points that you will have if it was a lattice. And uh, if uh, you take the search entropy, that is the measure of information that I, I, we discussed before, uh, on, on this axis, and uh, the number of intersection that uh, you have, so the number of times you can change between one line and the other in the, ne in, uh, in the network, we find that uh, it scales for different cities exactly as it would be for an, a lattice. So also in the, in, uh, from the perspective of information, a metro network is basically equivalent of a lattice, and this allows us to translate uh, the, um, the entropy to the number of connection points in the network. And uh, since this was uh, about eight, this will be about 256. Let's say 250. And uh, so our threshold would say that if you have more than 250 uh, are possibilities of connections in a network, so uh, options where you can change from one line to another, you would exceed the um, most complex path that you can have in the most complex uh, uh, transportation network, uh, metro transportation network. And uh, as uh, so, the transition already happened for simplest path in the same in the same network. So this is an upper bound of about 150 interconnections, and. Uh, the Paris metro system is below, but the Paris bus system is one order of magnitude above. So we can be sure that here we are in the try to get information in a scattered way kind of regime. If you add to, um, to the bus network the metro and the race, uh, the rail network, you have a, an even increase in information. And we propose as a parallel the number number. First, because the order of magnitude is more or less uh, that. So uh, it, there would be, uh, we're proposing something that could be like a, a limit to the maximum number of uh, um, connection one can handle in a map, similar to how Dunbar uh, um, claimed there is a limit in the total number of social links you can have in your life. This is a result made on different kind of apes or monkeys, I don't remember exactly, but this is basically how it scaled the size of the brain with the size of the group. And uh, uh, interpolating, you find that humans have 150 friends. And this has been confirmed studying Twitter and Facebook, I guess. But uh, it's still somehow controversial, but this is a kind of known limit. that You cannot uh, know everybody in the world. You will sooner or later forget about people. And it's not a surprise that the largest uh, um, uh, wedding fest in the south of Italy is about 300 people. That means two, twice this number. So it's Kind of confirm experimentally, and uh, we wanted then to study what is the effect of multimodality uh, of um, of the transportation network. First, because it was the project that was paid for, but also because uh, it uh, is something that could be simplify the, the way you navigate, but also complicate the way you navigate. Like for instance, uh, this is London. If you take uh, only the, the metro in London, you will have no problem. But this is the, the kind of information we'll have if you don't have the, the spider network. So if you have all this information, it's as hard as in Paris to get from one place to another. And what we observe, this is the, the probability distribution of the information for every couple of uh, origin destination in the network. And this is the yellow is for the, the metro. This is Paris. The red is the buses. and Orange is when you couple buses and metro. And what you see is that if you add 
if you couple the two, the two networks, the trips that will be done with, uh, with Metro, of course, get more complicated. Also, the trips that will be made in bus get more complicated because you have also the information of, uh, of, um, of, the, of the Metro. But you don't have this part, like you, you sh actually shorten the, num the number of, uh, of connections. You have the, 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 la the most complicated path are not there because you have shorter trips. This is another way of, see, of looking at it. This is the number of connections in, in a trip. And, you, and this, is, again, is a metro. This is the multilayer, and this is the bus. You see that the bus has uh, more, uh, more connections, and the metro is, is, has shorter trajectories. But uh, the, uh, the, when you add the two layers, you will have an, a more complex network with more interconnections, so we'll have more information. So there is a good and a bad. It's a kind of compromise when you start to mix uh, two uh, different layers. But and this basically is why I don't take the bus in Paris, because if you take the, the, the distribution I just show you and take the cumulative and just see this is the threshold. This is like uh, as I told you the most complex uh, metro metro path, and this uh, is where you find the transition more or less in this in this regime. And this is the uh, uh, cumulative, so this is the, the fraction of trips that are above the, um, uh, the, the, the threshold we find is about 20%. So 20% of the possible trips you can do in a Paris, Tokyo, or New York City um, bus map, or using the mass and the, and the, and the metro, is above the, the threshold we found. And uh, this 20%, that is the residual that is ab uh, uh, below the threshold, are only trips with only one connection, and if it's with two connections, the first, the first leg was very, very short. And so uh, the conclusion of the talk, for the first half I, I, I spoke uh, uh, about uh, awesome research done by other people, and uh, there are basically three different limits that we can, uh, uh, that can influence how we use uh, trans transportation maps. I show you that color heuristic can limit the cognitive, uh, cognitive load, but we can. Uh, 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 we, uh, this is normally used using. Uh, is the reason we have color transportation map basically. I show you how some uh, some maps can be simplified with uh, non not geographical features, and uh, that there is a transition that has been observed between um, readings uh, tra search strategy and a scatter and uh, isotropical search strategy. And then there is the result of my paper that we um, suggest that this uh, threshold should uh, appear, this, this transition should appear below 8 bits of information. We propose a measure for, uh, for the network first. We propose a measure of how you can um, identify the information in a transportation map. We find that the threshold should be below uh, this 8 bits of information. And we propose that this can be matched in the number of intersections that are present in the, in, the, um, in, the, in the map, and they should be below 250. And we show that the bus uh, uh, and multi, multimodal networks in large cities are for sure above this, uh, this threshold. And that is the reason in large cities, people do use these tools and cannot, uh, uh, cannot use only bus maps. I, I lived some months in, in Buenos Aires. In Buenos Aires, there isn't any bus map printed. You either you go with the book, there is all the lines, or you ask, the basically you go down and you ask, and every people has in mind the local network around their home. So you have to find a local that tell you how you get somewhere else. Nobody has the complete information. Or you can have a smart design like this that uh, um, like represented the ego network, this, uh, the kind of information the local would have, to how to get from where you are somewhere else. And thank you. <laughs> no, I'm not for, for in Palma, like my, my complaint, like I, I just would love to have you are here written in the, in the, in the bus maps <laughs> because uh, that would be like the hugest improvement for someone like me. <laughs> okay. So. I select uh, only uh, the um, trips 
that from origin estimation have two connections. This is the hardest, uh, the, the, the hardest you, can, you can get. Mostly because um, networks are, all, uh, are have, uh, uh, you can reach everywhere with two connections. And for the network where you cannot I, like, argue that you, uh, you will have reached the limit of the, um, of the working memory. And then I select the most complex networks. And I see how the, the distribution of the information for every couple of uh, origin destinations. So this is a community distribution. And I check what is the most complex um, uh, trip in the most complex network. And it has been already observed that somewhere here there is, there, is, um, there is a change in strategy. And I go to the most complex uh, map and I take the most complex trip. So the, uh, this is for, uh, we, are, we are for sure above whatever has been done, uh, whatever it was the information needed here and here. Because this is an ex example of any path in, in this case, uh, is not even a more complex network. This was a more complex network. So, so it's, it's basically just trying to get the worst condition possible and measure it. And uh, it's an upper bound, like the, it could be four, could be two, but uh, it could not be abo uh, above eight. And, the bus, uh, the bu and, and then what we found is the bus is far above eight. Okay? Okay. <laughs> And, and then just correct. And the result is missing here because when you part of the complexity is aligned, it's very long and has many stops. Because if, if, if I have to take an extra stop, and the extra stop is aligned that has just one end and one beginning, like if I go to Charter Go Airport or whatever, mm -hmm. it's a straight line, that at the end you walk that that step is very easy to learn that it doesn't take to me any additional memory. But it takes a lot of memory if that is the part of a real one. So I don't know if, if this would seem to mm. just to measure the lines of entity without disregarding all the information. Well, no. There is some information that is the number of connections with other lines there are. If you want in a map, it would be how many lines cross. Yeah, but uh, if you want, the real, the real flaws of this measure is that if you want to, to go from here to here, and you have like your map, let's take a map. There is a map somewhere. Uh, right here. Uh, well, okay, if you want to go from here to here, basically what I argue is that any time there is a line that, that where you have to check the cross like this or uh, oh, a lot of things like this will be a destructor. This will be two destructors, something like that. And I completely ignore the fact that these and these exist. And uh, so what the, uh, is the strongest limit is the fact that if you are, want to go from here to here, my measure or also co measure the complexity of this line here, here, here. So if you have already like an origin destination, you will use also the information that is out of the border you will define. Mm. You, you will have like to, to frame case by case the number of destructors only between, uh, I, I, I keep on arguing that the, the number of intersection is more relevant than the number of stops. But uh, uh, you will have for sure to, to limit the, 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 your frame analysis, but it will make like the, the, the definition a bit more complex. It was just a way of getting the, the most simple definition of the information and the most simple and like if you want, cut uh, widely definition of an upper bound. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> ah, no, okay, okay. 
on the, I, I, I read everything on the topic. There is a gender issue, but the issue is this. Uh, if uh, uh, the, the, the gender difference is that if you take a network and you change the network, like you, you, you ask to someone, solve the problem, and they find a solution, then you change the network in a point, the women will try to get the, uh, the uh, slighter deviation. Like if, if you cut a bridge, you they, like, they do that something like this. While a man uh, allow himself to resolve the problem from, uh, from scratch, tenaciously. This is a, a scientific paper written by, by a woman. So, it's <laughs> so the, there is a, like a, a, women are more like a, uh, conservative in, uh, in finding a new heuristic, while men are, prim uh, are more risk-taking. No, uh, uh, is, uh, is ah, no. <laughs> no, no. I, I, I agree. The, in, indeed, I, first I, I, I contacted the, the, the group that did the, the eye tracking studies, tried to, to get the money for making new experiments. And second, uh, this is like the, the good part of having like all these people uh, uh, speaking about what you do, you do in uh, online is that there is actually someone who understands it. And uh, I started like following on Twitter a discussion that was about starting my, 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 my paper, and with someone who actually said, okay, this is not the information of a map. This is the information of a network. This is exactly the point you're saying. Like, I, I'm not measuring this. I'm making like the topology of this. There is no geography. There is not color. There is not the fact that there is written musidoxy. And I'm just uh, trying to get a measure out of the topology. This is, of course, hypersimplifying. It would be like a, the first, uh, indeed what the um, what the, uh, the German group did for making uh, the, not here, oh, sorry, uh, uh, for making the, the eye tracking studies is finding a common design. Mm, sorry. Uh, if, if finding a, a, a design. Mm. Okay, I'm bored. Uh, it's finding, a, no, no, it, it's not comparing this map with another map that has another design, but using an unified design and trying to check only what was the difference in the, between the maps. There is a lot of, there, is, there are journals on this topic. There are literally journals on how to represent uh, special information on a map. And I'm far from uh, ready to read it all. <laughs> No, no, no. This, this, there is, this is what I was going to say. That the answer the, to this question why I don't take a bath in Paris will be only the last one. Yeah. Because you are all fine. <laughs> 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 no. <laughs> no the, the, the real question is I mean, all these apps and webs, uh, how do they solve the problem? Good force looking for all possible combinations? Or is there a, a strategy? Ah, uh, Google. Uh, I don't know if uh, Alex knows better than me this, uh, how, how Google is. Uh, because I, I guess Google does the shortest path and gives you like, a range of shortest paths that can be optimized in different ways. We all do this. Like uh, how you can minimize the number of, uh, of connections, you can minimize the time, you can decide not to take this line because I don't like it or whatever. The, but is uh, something that is uh, number crunching. But uh, there is a... Uh, the, th the point that the, a lot of people are first out of action, and second, like the Paris map is, is, is used by the metro map is used by everybody. This is like uh, as I told you, this is the uh, our perception of the city. This is how you construct a social perspective of a, a perspective of, of Paris. Indeed, I don't like this new map because it's not my map, and uh, and somehow the way you read it uh, is part of, uh, uh, of, of what you already know. And people would, uh, is, is, is known that st are stuck for traditional reason with sub-effective routes. I don't know if, if this is, make, uh, any, is any, any of our related with the question, but it's another stuff that I, uh, I liked a lot. 
if uh, you take uh, um, if there is a strike in Paris and a one line is blocked, people would explore new, new lines and will find out that the old way of getting to job, to do work, was, short, was, was worse. And the, the only way for teaching them how to, to get the best solution is not Google, is making them explore the network. <laughs> this is not related to the, to the question, but it was another funny stuff I've been made. Less no, the no I, I'm, I'm using the, uh, like the evidence of, of two exploratory uh, research that show that there is something happening. And I, uh, I, if uh, this is the ballpark of they saw something happening, I put myself here. And I say, this is the line. Because something happened before. Well, <laughs> Yes. In, in some in some cases there are the, the complex in some complex map there is they don't the the way the, that paper defined the complexity of the and map is, is, is uh, arbitrary. Yeah. But uh, the, the, okay if you want. Uh, the I'm lost in my own presentation, sorry, seventy slide. Uh, the the group in, uh, in Stuttgart made an awesome work but the six that are okay, and these are the six that are hard. This was like an arbitrary choice of complexity because there wasn't any measure of complexity around for deciding which one is the complex map. I propose a measure of complexity that can help you discern this is the simplest and this is the hard one. So for the project we're trying to develop would be like to do the same experiment and having my entropy as the independent variable this is how you would do the experiment, like the, 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 the research for, for real. Like you take an independent variable, then in this case would be my entropy, and you check how, what is the fraction of people that have one or the other behavior. I agree, this is a better paper. <laughs> and this is the reason I'm working on this uh, to get it founded and to get forward because, it, because I only define the way of discerning the network because this is a network science paper between these are complex and these are simple. And I drew a line where, where I expect that there are, there are the, we are, I already saw that there, there, there something was happening before. It's a very, very cut with a rough line. Yeah. Oh, well, thanks, thanks for the... Thanks again. Thank you.